thank you all for coming to listen to my talk on Launchpad. Um, the idea for Launchpad as a QL desktop program came from Darren Dranek in Ireland, who sold my QL software at the time. Um, he wanted to do something to go some way towards giving the QL desktop systems, probably to make it look similar to Windows. Horrible oh. thought. Um, as far as I was concerned at the time, I wasn't too keen on Windows. As far as I was concerned, the name Windows came from the fact that I always wanted to pick up the computer and throw it out of the window. So, but um, after a considerable period of thinking, and I think the whole project took me 12 months from start to end, uh, we came up with an outline specification for Launchpad, which was rather simpler in concept, and it evolved into eventually. Um, the name Launchpad itself uh, came from a little brainstorming session which Dad and I had over a few pints of Guinness uh, at the time. Um, its intended use from the beginning was as a simple program launching uh, application. Just a very simple concept, have a few icons with the names of the programs and little else. Keep it as simple as possible, try to make sure it runs on as many systems as possible. So, but uh, if I show this copy is running on QPC. Um, see as well, copy of the uh, because this mouse is on a slope here and this notebook computer has a scrolling screen, you might see funny things happen as the pointer moves from edge to edge. Um, the original version one of Launchpad is shown here running on Q Emulator. Um, another version, um, I felt the need to do a second version of Launchpad when a certain Marcel Kielbus decided to enhance the QALT operating system and provide it with color drivers and so on. Um, and also his work in updating Easy Pointer made it easy for me to produce an application like this in Compiled Basic. Um, I'm sure Marcel would say we gave him enough problems during the development of Launchpad. We put him through enough torture and we decided we wouldn't mm -hmm. start asking for any more. So, <laughs> so if I go back, it's probably easier for me to demonstrate just the one version. But, uh, the main difference is between the original version 1, um, which is running on Q Emulator, and the version 2 running on QPC, is the support for the new facilities which Marcel has introduced in GD2 versions of XMSQ. Um, the support for enhanced colour uh, uses the system palette colour themes. So uh, whatever colour scheme you have set up on your QPC or other high colour system. Um, Launchpad will obey the system palette colour scheme. And, uh, and with, uh, the Irish culture. I use some dictionary. So. No, no, I know. It's one of those things I'll get around to changing, but uh, as this one is for my own use of it. So much the mouse, it's the sloping surface of the file. Oh, right. so, um, so, very simple in concept. At the top right of the screen, you can have any of us to four desktops. Um, here, I just split them into groups of programs for my own use. Um, set up an icon for a program such as this Sprite Editor. From then on, all you need to do to start a program, a single click on the icon. Uh, okay, I haven't set the screen to the right resolution for that particular program. But, uh, find another program. Okay. And starting a program is as simple as that. Once you've set up an icon, the program remembers them all. 
you can let properties into the team box and struggle from that. So to set up um, in program icon, simply go to the file menu, add a new program, up comes a form to fill in. Most people, most programs will only use the top bit, whereas here the uh, rather difficult programs like the old Scion programs like Quill, Applicus, Archive, Easel, you can set specific settings, use dev devices, sub devices. Um, but really that's only for a minority of programs. Well the next one you go back to them tell you exactly he never did he never catered for wrong. Hmm. You didn't have a single key press for that. Yeah, which it was annoying. Yeah. He used R, yeah. the RAM, and he didn't bother with wrong. Is that because he chose a letter that already been taken? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. So uh, set up a new program, you would simply click on the file name slot. You can either type in the file name manually, or if you right click, that becomes a selection box to simply navigate to a particular program, extract the job name for picking purposes and so on, give the program a name, select an icon for it, so you have two pages of built-in icons. Um, fairly simple, these will work in mode 4 or like all mode 4 sprites will work in high colour as well. But the built-in ones are all mode 4 compatible. Well, you know, use the program, then. <laughs> you put the design on icon, so there's the program for it. Email. <laughs> nice one. You Sorry. designed icons for programs that don't exist. Well, an email program of sorts, Jonathan Hudson, did exist. Oh, okay. a limited program. Okay. Um, have been my intention. I have. I might show at the end of the session. I have the prototypes of an email program for my own. Anyway. Ah. So at the moment, it's in very early stages. You designed all these, you do. Yes. Um, so there are two pages of icons you can use for the programs, and in the version two of Launchpad. You also have a third page which will allow you to use high color sprites if you wish. Um, so, I'll show you how it's quite simple. So, once we've done the basics, for most programs, that's all we need to do. You now see the icon appears on the desktop up here. All we need to do is click once on it, program starts. It's a very old program, which uses the full QR screen. So. <laughs> <coughs> Obviously, that's not a program which finishes cleanly. When you press escape, it should. That really is the core function of the language of a launch plan. Um, a simple program launcher application, and that's all the very first version was. Um, Obviously, to be able to use Launchpad, you need a minimum of a QR system with expanded memory, toolkit 2, and pointer environment. Uh, if you use pointer environment version 2 or later, you can run Launchpad version 2, or on a QR with expanded memory and an older version of pointer environment, use the old version 1. The main difference being things like fixed color schemes and so on, the ability to use more colors version 2. <clears throat> um, to move on to the smaller part which we're added, I've included with it a number of little application programs such as a file manager. Um, so select the devices. This is a desktop. Well, either window can be source, either can be destination, <coughs> and then copy files between the, these icons. Uh, and the commands available, um, copy, delete, execute programs, create directories on systems that choose hard directories. Um, something new which really is only supported by this program is a trash scan 
which gives you non-permanent delete in effect. All it is is a specially named folder which moves files into that folder rather than deletes them as such, giving you the option if you wish to rescue files later. Quite a simple man. Is that folder on the same drive? Or is yes. It? Okay. Um, I mean, you can specify which drive, uh, where I set it up, it is on the same drive. But you can specify which drive and directory you want. It's called trash can. Sorry. Normally you would have one per drive. See what I mean, yes. You can. The only way around that in the present version would be configure different copies of the program for different drives. Oh dear. So it has to actually physically copy the file rather than rename it to move it to the trash. Yes, copy and delete, yes. What about filters? Filters, no. Again, these are things um, I've had obviously with a program of this nature, you get a lot of requests for new facilities and so on. Um, well, even a filter like Z1 or whatever. <coughs> yeah, not as yet. They are on the list of things. If ever I get time, because it's quite a long list of new features, if ever I get time to do it, they will be added. But um, at the moment, it works well enough for most purposes. Um, well, before I take it too far with too many new features, I would probably introduce version 3, uh, which would tidy up and simplify the code. Because if you look at the code, based on the old version 1 code and it's really been pushed a little bit beyond what I should have done. The code is quite horrible in some places. Um, that's the file manager. Basically all you do is you click on the files you want to copy, click on the arrow. Here we'll be copying from Win1 to Run1. Just click on the arrow. Uh, so you have very simple yes, no, all broad files. You can if you wish to rename the file by clicking on the box and typing in the new file there. Um, copying is as simple as that. Likewise, if you wish to delete the files, just, uh, just highlight the files you want to delete. Go to the commands menu. Delete and gone. Uh, if we want to move it to the trash can, um, copy a file first of all, a few files. And if it exists, you've got VA there as well, another menu. If it exists, you get another pop up menu with a. Yes, one, yes, one. that you can overwrite and yeah. skip files. Um, and if you want to put the files in the trash can rather than delete, um, just trash the files. On this occasion, ah, okay. The trash can is full. Yes. Uh, in fact, it's not just the trash can, this is actually running from a uh, pen drive plugged in, the QL on state pen drive. And it's the pen drive itself which is full. How does it determine? There's a default setting for the trash can, the default file. There's a default path somewhere for the trash can then. Path. Path. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That would have happened if you were configuration block. Oh, not in the program. No. Um, okay. I was so the default there. I was to put it into the program at one stage. I haven't got around to that. It would be nice to in that case to sort of redefine it in the program. Yes. Yeah. Agree. Uh, it's not something I've got around to yet, but a few people have asked. Um, if you implemented it by rename, you wouldn't have a problem saying, I haven't got enough room to throw it away. Yeah. yeah. You might also have the problem by renaming, if there's one trash can serving all drives, you would be able to rename a file. It's not good to have one trash can serving all drives. Huh? It's not good. I know. It, it was a fairly basic facility. Never intended to be a full-blown 